Just went and watched the Barbie movie, and it is probably the wokest film of 2023. This movie is not just a piece of shit. This movie is a flaming piece of dog uh, I don't need to watch Barbie to know that it's bad. So, I just saw Barbie, and it is the most preachy, woke, liberal, feminist garbage I have ever seen in my goddamn life. Or was it? Which pill will you take, audience? Will you take the Shapiro pill? Where you will stay in reality, crying and shitting about woke Hollywood forever? Or will you take the shoe pill? Where reality is anything you make it, and the Barbie movie was actually an anti-woke masterpiece. As a kid, I didn't really play with Barbies. I was not really a Barbie enjoyer. I liked dinosaurs, I liked Hot Wheels, I liked office lamps. So Barbie doesn't really hold any special nostalgia in my heart. But I was still very excited to see this film. The trailers to this film made it look funny and charming. Everyone was very excited to see Ryan Gosling as Ken, and every man on Earth was ready to download his new personality. And once I saw Ben Shapiro do a 45 minute video, I knew it just had to be good. Right, one of the Barbies is a trans Barbie with a voice again deeper than my own. Ben, I have a deeper voice than you. Everyone has a deeper voice than you. What was funny was people were actually dunking on Ben for bringing a notebook to the movie theater so he could write notes while he was watching Barbie. But like, I did that too. <laughs> Let's see what this says. Feet? Feet. Oh yeah, there was a lot of feet. There was a lot of feet in this movie. This is literally like hieroglyphics. What is this? What is that? What does it mean? So first of all, Let's get the good things out of the way. The set was amazing and gorgeous. I'm absolutely obsessed with the aesthetics of the Barbie movie. I love every single outfit Margot Robbie wore. The fashion and the visuals in this movie just spectacular. Margot Robbie did a great job as Barbie, even though according to the internet, she is mid. If you don't like Will Ferrell, you probably won't like his character in this movie because he's playing the same character he plays in every single movie, but I like that character, so I liked him in this movie. Ryan Gosling absolutely stole the entire movie, and I genuinely hope like he wins some kind of award for it because that would just be delicious irony. I laughed out loud like three times, which is less than I thought I would, but there were a lot of like funny and cute moments that will make you go, huh? The humor and the overall vibe of this movie reminded me a lot of Zoolander. Obviously not as funny as Zoolander, but the overall vibe was very early 2000s comedy. If you go into this movie with the idea that this movie was made to look like and feel like a movie made 20 years ago, it just makes a lot more sense. The movie broke the fourth wall often. It felt very self-aware or at least appeared that way. The parts of the movie where the movie wasn't trying to be anything deeper than what it was were great. But the parts of the movie that tried to be something deeper were really, really bad. But what if I told you that's what makes it so good? Take the shoe pill and I'll show you how deep this Barbie hole goes. Barbie hole? Now before I pop off, before I put on my, you know, 2016 shoe on head hat, let's make one thing perfectly clear. Barbie was always about female empowerment. I was absolutely expecting a girl power movie. Like, it's Barbie. If you were expecting anything else, then you're a fool. But I wasn't expecting the type of politics that were in this movie. The politics, at least on like a surface level, were very, very 2014. That is like the only way that I could describe it. The most tired, lib shit, corpo, tumbler, male tears ass. It had everything, you know, it had catcalling, it had mansplaining, it had patriarchy. Oh God, did it have patriarchy. The type of shit that's like, if women were in positions of power, everything would be better. And it's like the whole military industrial complex is run by women. Italy just elected a far right female prime minister. A shit ton of people in our government are women. How's that all working out? The film opens up with a reference to 2001 Space Odyssey. Little girls are seen playing with baby dolls as the narrator tells us about how before Barbie, all little girls got to pretend to be were mothers and nothing else until a giant Barbie appears and they smash their dolls. Now keep the intro in mind cause 
We'll get back to that. Barbie World is depicted as what I like to call a dystopian utopia. Barbie essentially lives in a pink hell world. Every day is exactly the same. Everyone is perfect. They feel no pain. They do not age. They have no need for food or drinks or real showers. They party every night, wake up and do it all again. The vibe is very much Stepford Wives, the neighborhood from Edward Scissorhands, and that one episode of Black Mirror. The Kens are just completely cocked and subservient to the Barbies. They just exist in the shadow of the Barbies. Just an entire sub class of simps, just like you guys. Barbie World is completely run by women. President Barbie, Dr. Barbie, Astronaut Barbie, and then there's Ken. I'm just Ken. And according to the movie, Ken only has a good day if Barbie notices him. Oh, and there's also trans Barbie, which I didn't even know she was trans at first. They never made it clear if she was trans Barbie or like the actress was just trans and she was just like a normal, Barbie. I think the actress was just trans and she was just playing a regular Barbie. Which is cool and makes sense because like, what the fuck would even be the point of transitioning if you're always gonna be stuck playing a trans character? All the Barbies do all day every day is like, look pretty, compliment each other, give each other awards. It all just feels very fake and, well, Plastic. At one point, the movie makes a point about how Mattel discontinued a pregnant Barbie and how they just want to ignore her and pretend she never existed. Don't look at her. Don't look at Midge. Look at all the doctors and astronauts. Look at all the girl bosses. Look over there. It was almost like the movie was making a point, but I don't know. In Barbie world, Barbie starts to have an existential crisis because she notices she has cellulite and flat feet and starts to have thoughts about death. She finds out this is happening because the girl who is playing with her in real life is sad, so she has to go to the real world and make that girl happy. So in the real world, Barbie is immediately sexualized and catcalled, and she even gets sexually assaulted at one point. But Ken, coming from a world where he didn't get any attention and was constantly fighting for any kind of attention, was loving the attention. Ask any man the last time a stranger complimented them. Men remember like every single compliment they've ever received in their lives. I know the men watching this, there's always that one compliment that sticks out in your mind. Maybe some lady complimented your shirt or your hair. And Ken is amazed that people are realizing that he exists. So clearly the movie is highlighting the isolation and loneliness men experience, clearly. While Barbie is off to find the girl who is playing with the doll version of her, Ken basically gets red-pilled by a right-wing little dark age edit, showing the glory and triumph of men. Presidents, rock stars, wrestlers, mini fridges and horses. And then, he learns about the patriarchy. Oh my god, is that, is that the patriarchy? <laughs> Ken reads all of this feminist literature, which tells him that men are in charge of everything and rule everything and can get away with anything. And the movie itself never really goes into anything else about patriarchy, so I guess that's what patriarchy is. So he walks into an office and asks for a job, and when the guy in charge is like, what are your credentials? Do you have any experience? Do you have a degree? And Ken is just like, well, I'm a man, shouldn't that be enough? So clearly, the movie was showing how ridiculous the idea of patriarchy is, clearly. Ken decides to bring patriarchy back to his fellow Ken, to free his fellow brethren from the longhouse. Meanwhile, Barbie meets the girl who is supposedly playing with her. She receives a lecture from the teenage girl about how Barbie has ruined the world and actually is fascist. You get like this full lecture right in the middle of the film. It's truly awful. You represent everything wrong with her culture. I haven't thought about you in years, you fascist. <laughs> the scene could have came right out of a Daily Wire skit. The little girl wasn't being depicted as the good guy here. She was being depicted as rude and ruthless and cruel for no reason, compared to happy, bubbly Barbie. The little girl is hyper-woke. She calls Barbie, the main character, a fascist and makes Barbie cry. There's also a scene where the little girl says, look, it's that nutcase woman referring to Barbie. And then the little girl's like, oh, sorry, I mean reality challenged woman. Which shows again, clearly the character is supposed to be like woke and a joke. They eventually find out it's the little girl's mom who is playing with Barbie and the mom is depressed. And honestly, every scene the little girl and the mom was in just fucking sucked. Like it just became a different movie every single time they were on screen and that movie sucked. I didn't really feel much empathy for them. It's implied they had a strained relationship 
through like a couple of flashbacks, but that's about it. It wasn't done very well. And like, I didn't really care about this. I just found myself wanting to see what the Kens were up to. So Ken establishes the patriarchy in Barbie world, which basically consists of mini fridges everywhere, sports, beer. He turns Barbie's dream house into Ken's mojo dojo casa house. And it looks freaking sweet. The Barbies in Ken's new established patriarchy seem much happier than before. They're having fun, drinking beers with the Kens, talking to the Kens about things like technology and sports and movies as opposed to the Barbie world where it was just like hi Barbie you look so pretty today hi Barbie you look so pretty today one Barbie even says out loud that it's nice to take a break from being a leader all the time like if they wanted to show the patriarchy being bad or oppressive they should have like a scene where one of the Ken slaps one of the Barbie's asses and the Barbie's like ew you know much like in the real world like what happened to Barbie in the real world to show that Ken bought patriarchy back from the real world, but none of that ever happened. Everything just looked cool and fun. Clearly, the movie is saying that patriarchy is good because if it was trying to say anything else, it failed. The Barbies and Kens are kind of paired up in these little like relationships. Like even though it was the patriarchy, even though the women were seen bringing drinks to the Kens, everything still revolved around the Barbies. They're playing music for them. They're playing the guitar and drums for them. They're teaching them how to play golf. They're explaining their favorite movies to them. It just came off like the Kens were being really sweet and nice. Like compared to Barbie world, the Ken takeover looked like liberation. And then like Barbie comes to like destroy a slave revolt. The only characters who seem to have a problem with this new established patriarchy is the outcasted Weird Barbie and the other outcast Alan. During Ken's takeover of Barbie Land, even in the real world, Ken's Dojo Mojo Casa House playsets were like selling off the shelves like hotcakes. And he was becoming a more popular toy than Barbie. Will Ferrell, the CEO, for some reason has a problem with this? that he's like making a lot of money off Ken because like the CEO's like, no, we're supposed to be about girl power. Yeah, okay, Mattel. I think this movie suffered a lot because like they couldn't actually make Mattel the villain. There was no like actual villain or threat in this whole movie. Like there was never a time where you feel like on the edge of your seat, oh no, are they gonna make it? Like what's gonna happen? There's like none of that. But anyway, the girl's mom and the girl travel back to Barbie land and then like the mom pops off on this cringe ass Twitter thread rant about how hard it is to be a human woman in front of the Barbies. We have to be smart, but not too smart. Pretty, but not too pretty. You have to be thin, but not too. You have to be a boss, but you can't be mean. Okay, this human woman from human world pops off about how hard it is being a human woman. And it turns out in fact that not only are you doing everything wrong, but also everything is your fault. And this like retarded, preachy speech about her human woman problems apparently snaps the Barbies out of their brainwashing. Yes, that's right. The Barbies weren't having fun with their Kens. They were brainwashed by the patriarchy. Giving voice to the cognitive dissonance required to be a woman under the patriarchy, he robbed it of its power. The Barbies were happy until this random woman barged in and started telling them about how oppressed women were and how actually it's really hard being a woman. Clearly, this woman is a metaphor for college. <laughs> At one point during the unbrainwashing, a Barbie snapped out of it and was like, why am I wearing this dress? I would never wear this dress. And the mom is like, yeah, because you're a physicist. What? I couldn't help but think of like other girl power movies who did this much better, like Legally Blonde. That literally has the opposite message here. And this movie is like, you're smart. What are you doing being hot? Hello? Women can do everything except want to dress sexy and be submissive to a man or get along with men in general or else they're just brainwashed by the patriarchy. Clearly, the movie was trying to show us how ridiculous that is and was making fun of that, clearly. So with the new feminist program downloaded into their brains, the Barbies decide to trick the Kens to distract them 
into infighting. So while they're busy fighting, they could secure the Barbie world constitution or an, and take the government back or something. So what do they do? What do they do with this new knowledge of feminine empowerment? They use the Ken's love and devotion and loyalty against them and trick the Kens into thinking they are cheating on them with other Kens. Clearly showing that women will be brainwashed by feminism to destroy monogamy. Clearly. Now while the Kens are busy infighting, the Barbies get back into power historically, how fascism takes over, and they go right back to living their girl boss utopia. The movie just showing that Feminism is doo-doo, and not about equal rights. Greta Gerwig, you genius. Even I wouldn't have come up with such a brilliant movie. Ken learns that he doesn't have to rely on Barbie. He could be his own self and have his own personality outside of Barbie. Basically, like, he just learns to stop being a simp. But what's funny and ironic about this movie is, even though the movie is about Barbie, it's basically the Ken movie. Ken has the biggest character arc. Barbie doesn't even really have one until like the last second of the movie. And then she's like, I don't even know who I am. And it's like, where the fuck did that even come from? There's no like epic moment for the Barbies. And the Kens get like a really fun and entertaining musical number. The clash between these two groups on screen towards the end. A woman like lecturing us versus a bunch of dudes dancing and being bros. Like clearly this movie is pro men because if it was trying to be anything else, it failed. <laughs> Barbie is the matrix for women. Would you rather live in Barbie land, never age, never get cellulite, never cry, and just party all the time with your friends? Or live in the real world where everything is imperfect, you age, you get cellulite, and you cry, but it's real. And after holding the hands of Ruth, the creator of Barbie, Barbie is overwhelmed with images of mothers and daughters. So Barbie decides to reject the blue pill, rejects the perfection, and rejects the matriarchy, chooses to stay in the real world, chooses to stay in the patriarchy, and chooses to become human. So apparently, when she has turned into a real woman, she has now grown a vagina. So the first thing that she does is she goes to the gynecologist because ladies, the apotheosis of your being is not motherhood. We, we got rid of that at the very beginning. It is your vagina. It is that you go to the gynecologist. The scene in 2001 Odyssey shows man could stop being a victim of nature and instead have power over nature. The little girls in the beginning show they don't have to be a victim of the patriarchy. No longer do they have to be confined to motherhood, to nature. They now have power over nature. And so they smash their baby dolls in the shadow of a towering pillar of Barbie, a towering pillar of Mattel, a towering pillar of capitalism. Clearly contrasted with the ending of the movie, where Barbie rejects her capitalist utopia created by Mattel, visits a gynecologist, and embraces nature. Nah, it really ain't that deep. It was just kind of a s silly little movie. It was a it was a fun movie. I liked it. It was a nice change from the non-stop Disney remakes and Marvel movies. It was also nice to just see some like color on the big screen instead of brown and gray because everything has to be gritty and realistic. This was just very cartoony and fun and reminded me a lot of early 2000s movies like Josie and the Pussycats. Also this movie is like deadass a Rorschach test. I heard people say it's woke, anti-woke, gender abolitionist, alt-right, a turf film. My boyfriend made an entire video about how actually it's a conservative film and how Greta Gerwig is our new Homer. No, I'm not joking. The discourse around this movie is like more interesting and entertaining than the movie. But I do recommend seeing it, I mean, or like waiting until it's on I almost said DVD. It was cute, you know, not every movie is going to agree with me politically and that's okay, you know, like, not every movie is gonna be, I don't know, Fight Club? <laughs> so did you see this movie and what did you think of it? If you like this video and want to support my channel, please feel free to donate to my Patreon, link down below, and I will see you guys real soon with a new video. A video that's not a movie review, like a real video. <laughs>